Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is time for a heel Billy moment. Just kidding, it's time for some trans memes. Let's do it. We care about you and we'll support you if you're struggling, my parents. Wow, this is great. They're gonna support me. This means everything to me. This is amazing, they're gonna back me up. Me being forced back into the closet around family because trans people, quote unquote, aren't real. <laughs> that was me ripping the paper. Get out of here. This can be applied to many different scenarios, many different situations, right? If you're gonna be an ally, if you're gonna support your trans friends, if you're gonna support their transition and their new name, their new pronouns, all that kind of stuff, then you support it all the way, babes. There's no back and forth. If you're in it, you're in it. If you support, then support, show that support. Like you can't claim to be a supportive person, an ally, if you're only showing support and you're only showing your allyship in their room with that trans person, or even worse, when you're alone in a room with that trans person. Being an ally means that you will stand up for trans people when there's no other trans people around. You will stand up to cis people and correct cis people who are misgendering trans people. That's what it means to be an ally. That's what it means to be supportive. If you're going to tell your child that you're supportive of them and you accept them and you're gonna back them up, don't force them back into the closet on Christmas, babe. Don't force them to use their old name on Thanksgiving. I will throw a mashed potato right at your head, Barbara. Pa -pa! I'm just kidding. Imagine just mashed potato. Somebody misgenders you. Pa -pa! Nothing a quick little mashed potato with a face can't fix. For my girlies out there, if you have a best friend who's trans and your boyfriend is transphobic, you gotta go. Run, bitch, run! Wrap it up. This is me wrapping up a little ball. Gotta go. That's what we call guilty by association, babes. If I hear support coming out of your mouth, I don't wanna see a transphobe going in it. <laughs> Being transgender, oh, being a transformer, now that is what I'm talking about. I love this one. Immediately when I saw this one, I thought of all the transphobes that are like, oh my God, the transformers are coming. The transphobers are so mad. I'm like, you think that's an insult? You think I don't want to be Miss Optimus Prime? I'm trying to think of like a cute name for like Optimus Prime. Optimus Prima Donna. <laughs> These bitches really did not think this one through because every time I think of being a transformer now, I just think that I look like Megan Fox. So thanks transphobes for affirming my gender. <laughs> also, SpongeBob looks so good. Was this during like the Super Bowl episode where he like, where, where Patrick like played the mayonnaise? I don't know, but you can call me a transformer any day, SpongeBob. Have a bi girlfriend. Come out as trans femme. No, wait a minute, wait a minute y'all. She supports me and loves me. No, wait, no, that's the next one. She supports and loves me. I'm not making that face, but that face. She gives me her old clothes and makeup. That is a life hack. That is truly a life hack. I should have done that. Nobody gave me their old makeup, girl. Nobody gave me their old clothes. Actually, no, that's not true. My sister did try to give me her old clothes, but like they were real old and she's older than me. So like not my style. I'm so sorry, sister. I'm so sorry. You're super cute. Your style is super cute. It's come a long way. I promise. To my best friends though, what the fuck? Cassie, what the fuck? Give me your makeup, give me your clothes. It's the curse of being a straight trans woman. I don't get any free makeup or clothes, except from PR companies. Thanks, One Size. <laughs> For real though, One Size Beauty, check it out. Gender envy from normal sources. Eh. Gender envy from Eddie in 1969 Japanese queer art house film, Death Paradise, Death Parade of Roses. Again, I'm dyslexic. Who? Who? Who the fuck is Eddie? Wait a second, who is Eddie? I need to know who Eddie is, let's look. Eddie, where are you? Eddie, Eddie. First of all, the meme is wrong. It's Funeral Parade of Roses. It's not Death Parade of Roses, but I get it. I see it. She's that girl. The little Totally Spies sunglasses. That's who I got gender envy from. Sam from Totally Spies, the one with the green suit and the, the orange hair. She, we get the same name. How could I not? <laughs> no, but I... Ooh. We're gonna be done with this one. I get it, but who the fuck is that? <laughs> is that him out of drag? I think she's a drag queen. Anyways, I don't know who that is, but whatever floats your boat, girl. Is that my girl, Lana? I love my girl, Lana. I'm tired of being the good girl. It's time to being the good boy. <laughs> and you know how I know that this, this person's gender identity is real, that this trans man is actually a man? Because the bad grammar. It's the bad grammar for me, sir. <laughs> it's time to being the good boy. It's time to go back to grammar school. That's what it's time for. <laughs> Anything with Lana though, I'm all about. All about Lana, love her. Like the beehive hair? Uh, can you do beehive hair with curly hair? Somebody let me know. Somebody come beehive my hair for me, please. Just accepting that I'm trans mask. Okay, for real though, <laughs> what is with the bad grammar? What is with the bad spelling? Trans community, get it together. Trans community, do better. I'm so annoying, I'm just kidding, I don't care. They're saying, just accepting that I'm trans mask, eh, too hard. I can't be trans because I like my long hair and updos. This one's relatable. This one I understand a little bit because sometimes I'm like, why do I just like not wanna do my makeup today? Am I really trans? Like, why do I not wanna wear like a full ball gown today? Like, maybe I'm not really a woman. Maybe I'm not really trans. I'm just kidding, I don't really think that a lot. But it's like, no babe, <laughs> you just don't wanna do your makeup. 
makeup. You just don't wanna wear that today, it's okay. <laughs> that is something that you can learn from transphobes is that women are not just hair and makeup and clothing and stuff like that. You can be a woman no matter what you look like. Thanks TERFs, thanks transphobes. <laughs> Me waking up with like a full beard, hair shaven, fucking, what else is masculine? I don't know, big muscles. Mm, I actually kind of look jacked. I'm not. Get that thing out of my face. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me. Me. Mm, kind of like high heels. <laughs> Wait, is that part of the meme, the chicken thoughts? I think it's just the person who made it because it doesn't really make sense, but the amount of times I like stole my mom's high heels out of her closet when I was like a fucking six-year-old little boy, just wore them around the house, clomping down the stairs and fucking high heels that were five sizes too big. I had like a bandana tied around my head. I just got like a memory flashback. I used to... <laughs> I used to put my mom's bras on and like stuff them. I was like a fucking six year old. Isn't this so like, I don't know how my parents didn't know that I was fucking trans, but I used to like put her bras on and pretend I had boobs. Just pretend I had boobs. I should have known. I should have known. Now this one I brought up because I'm a little curious. I've seen a lot of shark things going around. Oh, I forgot to screenshot the caption on this one. It was like, I'm not trans or something like that. I don't know. I don't, and it was cute, but I don't get the shark thing. I've seen a lot of trans memes about sharks lately, especially the shark plushy. What's that about? Explanito. Like I get the hormones, I get the patches, but but the shark, is the shark trans? Is the shark on gels? Is the shark taking moans? For real though, I don't get it. Somebody explain the shark phenomenon. I do like the shark. I don't know what it means, but I do like it. I want one. Maybe that's all it means. Maybe, maybe we all just somehow like sharks for some reason. We all just somehow like shark plushies. I'm not about real sharks. No ma'am. But that one, I fuck with her. Hi Gru. Starting HRT and look more fun. Me. And it also makes you look younger. Regularly getting ID checked and the cashier gets skeptical if this is actually my ID. Period. Like, oh, I just look so young. I just look so different and beautiful now. But of course it's me, of course, duh. Thank you though, thank you. Regularly getting ID checked and the cashier gets skeptical if this is actually my ID. <laughs> and it's like, well on second thought. Shit. This will all change for you once you get your ID changed after you start hormones and like get your sex marker changed on your license. Cause I get it. <laughs> when I first transitioned, I had like my male ID for a while. And every time I would go to like the liquor store, actually I think, I think I changed it before I got the liquor store, but like I was buying other things <laughs> that you need an ID for. And I would go in and like, they'd be like ID please. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Here. And then it would just be like male and it's just like a picture of me the boy and I'm like, it's me, I swear, I just look much cuntier now. <laughs> I like pull up a picture of my prescription, I'm like, I swear, I'm just on I'm just on I'm just on hormones. I pull up my transition video on YouTube, I'm like, it's me, look, it's just long hair now. But thank you. Thank you, babe. I just look so different. Like, what can I say? <laughs> I think we need another despicable me where Gru explores his gender identity. Mr. Gru some titties. <laughs> Anyways, next meme. No context needed for this one, but you know, you get it. If you're a trans girl, you get it. I have like five pairs of them in my closet right now. This is my trans girl theory. I think that this is because of Ariana Grande. I really do. I've talked about it here on my channel before that like Ariana Grande was like my trans awakening. Like I saw a gif of her one time when I was just like on Tumblr one day and she was just expressing herself so freely and so femininely and just looked bomb, bomb as hell. And I was like, why can't I express myself like that? Why can't I look like that? Why can't I, you know, act like that? Why can't I just, feel the way that she must be feeling. And of course, I think this was right around the time where Santa Tell Me came out, where she was wearing the little like Santa sweater with like the long thigh high socks. I just wanted it. Like I just wanted to be that bitch. I just wanted to feel that vibe, I don't know. But also just the thigh high socks are so feminizing. Like you could have the manliest fucking calf. You throw on a thigh high sock, girl. What man? What leg hair? What calf muscle? Straight female leg over here. <laughs> Is there a difference between male and female legs? Moments later. Before I transitioned, I remember being in therapy one day and <laughs> literally, I had this therapy story time. I was in therapy and she was asking me like, why don't we make a list of things that you like about yourself? <laughs> because I just hated myself so much. And I literally couldn't think of anything. It's so dark and so sad, but I literally didn't have anything to put on the list. I didn't like anything about myself except for my legs. <laughs> and it's not like I had like exceptional legs. I just thought they were cute. I just thought they were pretty. Looking back on it, <laughs> they looked a little femme. They looked a little a little scrawny, a little femme. Not that women have scrawny legs, but you know what I mean. They just weren't giving mask, you know what I mean? But now, now that I fully transitioned, I love working out my legs. I love going to the gym and trying to get my legs as big as possible because I just want some like big womanly thighs. <laughs> so yeah, full circle moment for me. Full, full sock circle moment. That doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. If you're a trans girl too, comment down below, you know. We all like the thigh high socks. Let them know. Just like back me up here, okay? We all like thigh high socks. I do like the little like clip on there too though. 
Okay, I need to stop. They're gonna say that I'm like sexualizing women. I'm so sorry. I love this meme format. Okay, let's do it. I have longer hair. <laughs> that one cleaning lady at work. Yeah, you do have longer hair. And I have visible boobs. Sure. <laughs> Why are you looking at my boobs? I'm just kidding. So you admit it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm using my feminine voice. That was my best attempt at a feminine voice. And we're in the women's bathroom. You see a urinal, Barbara? Good morning, sir. Ooh, here's the thing. If you genuinely don't know that somebody is trans and you misgender them by accident, that's fine. You know what I mean? We're not fucking crazy. If you make a mistake, just correct it. You know what I mean? Just allow us to correct you and do your best moving forward. But I have like all the different cues on. You know, my, I got my makeup done. I got my hair done. I got my feminine voice on. I got my fucking, you know, things out. Don't hit me with a good morning, sir. Don't. You look silly. You look dumb. Along the same line, if you see somebody that you're not really sure if they're like a trans woman or a trans guy or just cis and maybe don't conform to gender norms, whatever, whatever, just throw them a they. Throw a they in there. Or better yet, don't use a pronoun. Like it is possible to converse with somebody without using a pronoun. I do that all the time though. I just kind of default to a they pronoun just because it's easier. It's just easier for me. And I'm all about making my life easy. Start estrogen. Okay. Double my dose after the first month. Haven't noticed any physical nor mental changes after almost three months. Don't feel bad. The caption for this one was, I think my body is broken. And like, babe, no, you're okay. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, just give it some time. I will say that there are a few reasons that this could be happening, that you might not be noticing changes as quickly as you anticipated. The first reason is that the estrogen that you are on is a less effective administration method. So I think that injectable estrogen is the most effective, followed by pills, followed by patches, followed by gels. So if you're using like a patches and a gel, you're not going to get the same level of changes that you would with shots or pills. Pills. Secondly, obviously, if you're on a low dose, you're not going to see those changes as quickly. And the third reason, which is the most probable reason, at least in my case, is that you are not consistent with your hormones, especially in the beginning. You've got to be consistent. You've got to take them when you're supposed to every single time. Don't forget or you're going to turn into a man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But for real, you really do want to be super, super on top of it, especially if you're pre-op or non-op because your body is always going to be wanting to make testosterone. So you really need to stay on top of it. I do want to mention that even if you are post-op bottom surgery, you need to stay consistent with your hormones. You no longer need to take a testosterone blocker, obviously, but you do need to stay consistent with your estrogen because obviously your body is no longer producing any hormones. And if you have no hormones, you will die. I'm just kidding. But you might your health will deteriorate. You need to be on something. Trust me, girl. I know. Your physical health will suffer. Your mental health will suffer. And that's just how it is. Stay consistent. Just to finish this meme out, if you aren't noticing any changes, be patient. It's okay. It's okay. Some people get more changes than others, even on the most effective forms of estrogen. And that's fine. If you don't get a lot of changes, you don't get a lot of changes. No biggie. It's, it's all right. It's not the end of the world. I would just say, give it some time. Give it a little bit of time, Susie. Oh my God, I know I just said I was about to move on, but I do want to mention, I've seen so many girls like on TikTok and stuff like that, like starting hormones and then like two or three months later, like having FFS, getting their boobs done, like all of this stuff, which is like, I transitioned very, very quickly as well. I had my bottom surgery literally a year after I started hormones, but I feel like that's a little bit different. You know, when it comes to your face and when it comes to your chest, you need to give your body time to develop on these new hormones, okay? Because it's not gonna happen in the first two or three months. Your body's not gonna change in the first two or three months. Your breast tissue will take three to five years to form. And if you put implants in before that, you can end up with wonky looking boobs. Your face will change immensely over the first couple of years of being on hormones. You'll get more fat in different areas. And if you do FFS too quickly, you may end up doing procedures that you wouldn't have done in the future. Like for me, when I first transitioned, when I was first thinking about having FFS, it was within that first six months of starting hormones. And I said to myself, like, I want my nose done. I want my jaw done. I want my chin done. I need my eyes lift, like all of these crazy things, which are pretty common FFS procedures, but not everybody needs them. Like if I look at my face now, I don't really have much of a jaw to be taking down. I don't really have much of a nose to be taking down. It just needed to give my face a little bit of time with the hormones to change. Your nose does change on hormones. You get less oil glands in here. It shrinks down and shrinks down. <laughs> your jaw may change. Actually, maybe not your jaw so much, but before you get your jaw done, girls, try a little Botox right here. That's what I do. Does wonders. Anyways, next, next meme, next meme. That's the girl who thinks Invader Zim. Is that Invader Zim? Zim is a trans allegory. Me, she kind of looks like me, girl. That's Invader Zim, right? I never really watched Invader Zim. If they are trans, I need to know. I need to know, I'll plaster that bitch all around me. He's so cute. They're so cute, she's so cute. <laughs> See, this is why I just use they. I'm like, I don't know your gender, I'm so sorry. Tucking with tape, binding with tape, 
and then they meet in the middle to form rash and ungodly places. Babe, babes, you gotta stop. Before I had surgery, I tucked every day, okay? Every single day I would be tucked and ducked and flipped, okay? I'm not kidding, I really was. But there are safer ways to do it than fucking duct tape. I saw a TikTok the other day of some girl who had the clear like box sealing tape, like packaging tape, and she said, I tucked with this last night. Oh! You did what? You you did what? You put that where? She's like, it ripped off a whole chunk. <sighs> what? Yeah, obviously it ripped off a big chunk. That's duct tape. That's industrial grade, sister. Please do not put duct tape on your genitalia. Do not. No tape on the genitals. Oh my God. Invest in a nice little pair of tucking panties, a gaff if you must. Knock it off with the tape, girls. Knock it off. Same for the trans men out there. I mean, I never binded, so I don't know what the most safe practices are for binding, but... There's gotta be a safer way than tape. Actually, no, I think they do make tape that's like safe, right? Trans tape, isn't trans tape a thing? I think I met the people that made trans tape one time. But even with this specially made trans tape, there is a certain way to bind. There is a safe way to bind your chest. It is not for extended periods of time. I think it's like, eight hours max, maximum. And yeah, it's just, you gotta be careful with these things because they can do damage to your body, okay? The tape on the genitals is bad enough, but binding your chest, you can cause damage to your rib cage. Please be careful. I understand gender dysphoria is fucking tough. It's draining, it is awful, but your rib cage collapsing or the skin coming off of your genitals? Arguably worse. I love The Office, seriously. Me enjoying a piece of media. This is me, I'm being Dwight. <laughs> the desire to steal a character's name. Now I'm Angela. Angela's that girl. They're a couple goals. No, they're not. I'm sorry. This is so me. I don't know if maybe it's because when I changed my name, I just kind of did the more feminine version of my of my old name. But sometimes I'll hear like a really good name, like a really pretty name. I'm like, ooh, ooh, damn it. <laughs> really, really uh, messed that one up. Should have picked a better one. Or even like my last name, like my the last name for my stage name, I, I call it. I sometimes wish I picked something different because I made my name Samantha Lux when I was in like high school. So I'm like, I kind of could use a different name now, but we in here. I'm Samantha Lux till the end of the time. Till the end of time, I guess. I buy a skirt for cis male reasons. It makes me feel cute and feminine, which is important to me. Also for cis male reasons. I post a picture of me sitting while wearing it, tagging the store I bought it from. They respond with, you look so cute. And I melt into a puddle of euphoria. Also for cis male reasons. Babe, that's denial. You're a girl. I'm gonna get fucking, the trans are gonna be so mad at me. The D-trans, the turfs are gonna be so mad. You're in denial, babe. You're a girl. Put on the skirt, own it. Get yourself a pair of eyelashes. You ever just see someone and you're like, ooh, I could crack that egg. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. This is all jokes, okay? I don't I don't go around trying to crack eggs. But if they are an egg and they wanna be cracked, I'll crack them. Crack. Take this, take this lipstick. My closeted ass. My dad going on about why transphobia is okay. First of all, weird. If somebody's going on a rant on why being a bigoted person is okay, ugh, yikes. <laughs> but this is why I say to just watch what you say. You know what I mean? You never know who's gonna be around you. You never know who's gonna be affected by what you're saying. There's a saying that my mom loves that she always says to me and it fits perfectly for this meme. It goes along the lines, or it is, it doesn't go along the lines of it, it is precisely be careful who you hate because it might be someone you love. And I'm just like, so true bestie. Before I came out as trans, before I even came out as gay a long, long time ago, I would hear all these things around me about gay people, about trans people, about LGBT people as a whole. And they got to me. Nobody around me that was saying these things knew that I had these feelings inside of like, am I gay? Am I trans? And like trying to push them down. Nobody knew that that was going on. So they didn't know that they were offending me or making me feel some type of way about myself, but they were. And so I'm just, I'm just begging you, babes. Just be careful. It's like that scene from The Office where Michael finds out that Oscar is gay. And he's like, well, I need to find out who The Office gays are because I don't want to offend anybody. And Dwight's like, you could just assume everybody's gay and not say anything offensive. And he's like, well, that's ridiculous. I'm sure everybody would love me treating them like they were gay. <laughs> okay, this little critter is entering hell. It says, huh. Your name's not on our list. And they go, of course not. I don't belong here. I passed an anti-trans legislation. And the devil goes, mm, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Typing away, typing away, typing away. You belong over there. Extra hell, girl. This is a special place in hell for you. I love this, especially because I don't know if you've seen it, but on Twitter the past couple of weeks, I've been, you know, chit-chatting, I'll call it, with some D-trans people, some, you know, just anti-trans people. And they always talk about these anti-trans laws as if they're doing something great for people, right? They say, oh, I got this taken away so nobody will, will suffer like this one person did, but now it's causing thousands of other kids to suffer and potentially harm themselves because 
they can't access the care that they just banned because it badly affected one person. I truly understand that some of them maybe think that they're doing the right thing and that they're doing a great thing, but they're not. These anti-trans bills that ban gender affirming care for people under 18, it's not a good thing. It's going to harm people. There have been numerous studies that show that when people have access to hormone replacement therapy and gender affirming care when they want these treatments, that their levels of depression, that their levels of anxiety and suicidality all decrease and their quality of life increases. When you take that away, the opposite is true. Depression, anxiety, suicidality all goes up. And I would argue it's their fault. The people who are banning gender affirming care, they have blood on their hands. Okay, so this dude's reaching for a little ball. It says, feeling like I'll be so much more confident after transitioning. And then in the back of their mind, they have something holding them back saying, what if I don't feel more confident when I transition? What if I still feel insecure about myself? Is there anyone who completely flipped from shy to confident after transition? I want assurance. I hate to say it, I really do, but I can't give you that assurance. Transitioning does not fix your self-esteem. Transitioning will not take away your insecurities, unless of course your insecurities are all related to, you know, physical characteristics that are of the opposite gender. But that deep self-loathing that a lot of us feel because we've been, you know, told to feel this way by outside sources our entire life, that doesn't go away with transitioning. The only way to make that go away is some deep, deep internal work. You need to completely shatter all of these misrepresentations of who you are and how you are as a person. You need to release all of these expectations from other people and you need to build from the ground up. You need to find out who you are, your morals, how you wanna live as a person, how you wanna operate in this world and build up from there. You need to break yourself down to your core, down to your very essence so that you can tell your core, you can tell your essence that it is lovable, that it is worthy and that it is not less than regardless of what other people have told you. Transitioning will not do that deep internal work for you. It may sometimes make it easier because you're kind of forced to deal with all of these expectations from other people and kind of shatter them then. But the fact of the matter is it's, it's on you to do this work. It's not just gonna happen for you. But that being said, it is possible. It is possible to go from a shy, insecure person to somebody who is more confident and outgoing because I've done that. But it was not through transitioning. It was through creating this unconditional self-love for myself. You can do it too, babes. You can do it. Oh my God, I think this one explains the shark memes. Karen, I know you didn't have plushies growing up, but this feels like a lot. And <laughs> there's like 50 shark toys just like burying a little trans girl in. Who dares to question the queen of sharks? Guards, seize them. I need a plushy shark army. Don't come for my shark army, girl. They'll get you next. You know, that is true. I'm looking around my room right now and I'm like, okay, I have two Barbies over there. I have a brat doll over there. I have a monster high doll. I have all these like traditionally little girl things. It sounds so weird. All these like little girl things because I never had them when I was young. And it's kind of healing to my inner child to be like, I can play with this. I'm yeah. not gonna get yelled at for playing this. This this motion is not good. I can play with this toy and I'm not gonna get yelled at for playing with this toy and I don't have to feel shame about playing with this toy and enjoying it. And that is very healing. It is healing. So I get the sharks. Bring on the sharks. When you're trans and have to explain why you have that part. When you're trans and say it was a birth defect, Girl, I've been there. I did that too, girl. I did that too. Don't, don't worry. Whatever works. I mean, whatever floats your boat, right? I knew somebody a long time ago who referred to their trans identity as them just being intersex. And they rationalized it by saying, okay, well, I was born with all of my parts being male, except for my brain. The only organ in my body that is different, that is female, is my brain. So it's like they had the body of a male and a female. You know what I mean? So in that way, it does kind of make sense. But that's only if you believe that there are male and female brains. I will say I have evolved past this now. I no longer feel shame about explaining why my body is the way it is and you know how I am. And I think that comes with, again, that deep internal work, that deep self-love that just helps you feel confident in just being you and just feel lovable being the way you are. You don't need to make excuses for your body. Once you love yourself that deeply, you no longer need to make excuses for your body. You're just like, fuck you, this is my body, fuck you. <laughs> don't worry, Nick. It's all according to God's plan. God's, God's plan. plan. Isn't that like a Drake song? <laughs> Imagine the Drake song, God's plan being about trans guys. And here's God, here's God over here with this to-do list. One, create universe. Two, give Nick gender dysphoria. <laughs> hey, you said it. You said God did this. My hair looks so good. You did this to me, girl. God gave me this. God made me this way. That's my favorite response for like the religion argument is like, God made you a man. No, ma'am, God made me a trans woman. God put me in a male body and gave me the soul of a female. God wanted me to be like this. <laughs> like, don't you dare use your religion against me. First of all, I'm not religious. I love religion for other people, that's great. I'm not religious, keep it to yourself. But second of all, 
If I was religious, God's on my side, girl, not yours. Okay, you guys, that was the last meme that I had for today. What'd you think? Which one was your favorite? Which one? Which one? I think I'm gonna do a meme video like this every month. We can call it the monthly meme video or something like that. Maybe we should make a cute little name for it. You know what I mean? Give it a theme. But yeah, you guys seem to really enjoy these videos and they're obviously so much fun for me to make. I just, you know, giggle, have some fun. So yeah, I'm down to do more and I will be doing more next month. <laughs> I do post videos every single week here on my channel. So if you like this video, make sure to go watch another one. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm gonna go. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.